In this talk, Rupert Spira explores the nature of awareness beyond physical perception. He challenges the belief that consciousness is tied to the body or or external objects, showing that awareness is ever-present, even in deep sleep. By rethinking this core belief, Spira reveals how consciousness exists independently, with the body as an experience within it. The reason we think awareness is nothing is because we think that all of this is something. The, the teenage kid is watching football. He's watching match of the day. His mum comes in and says, what are you looking at? He says, match of the day. 20 minutes later, his mum comes in. The game's finished. Kids turn the TV off. His mum says, what are you watching? He says, nothing. The reason he says nothing now is because he said something earlier. The nothing that he's watching now with the screen off, with the, 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 the TV off, is the complement to the feeling I'm seeing something when I'm watching Match of the Day. <laughs> However, if his mum had come in and said to him while he was watching Match of the Day, what are you looking at? And he had said, a screen. 20 minutes later, he's turned the TV off. His mum comes in again and says, what are you looking at now? What would he say? You. <laughs> Repeat that again. <laughs> in the second scenario, yeah. the kid is watching Match of the Day. Mum comes in, says, what are you looking at? He's a smart kid, so he just says, I'm looking at the screen. 20 minutes later, the game's over. He turns the TV off. His mum comes in again and says, now what are you looking at? And he's still facing the same direction. He's still facing the same direction. Yeah, the screen. What does he, he says the screen. Yeah. yeah. Because he realized he was seeing the screen in the first instance, he realizes he's still seeing the screen in the second instance. Mm -hmm. In the first scenario, he thought he was seeing something in the first instance. So in the second instance, he said, I'm seeing nothing. If you think you're seeing something in the waking state, then you think that deep sleep will be nothing. But if we realize that in the waking state, there are no things, it's just consciousness, then we realize that Deep sleep is not a blank, empty nothing, or indeed the experience of consciousness is not a blank, empty nothing. But the, the, the problem is, the, the underlying problem is the deep belief we have, and this belief outlives many years of non-dual exploration. This has been my experience. It is the belief that now it is I, the body, that is aware of my experience. That, that is the reason we have this problem. Because it seems now for all of us, including myself, that experience is perceived from the perspective of the body. I close my eyes, the, the sight of the room disappears. Therefore, it's so obvious, isn't it, that consciousness must be located behind the eyes. Because I see everything when I look in this direction. I see everything in front of me. When I close my eyes, everything in front of me vanishes. Therefore, the logical conclusion is consciousness is located in the body behind the eyes. Hence the belief, it is I, the body, that is aware of my experience. And it is because of this deep feeling that it is I, the body, that is aware, as opposed to the understanding that it is I, awareness, that am aware, that we have this difficulty. If it is clear to us now that it is I, awareness, that 
is aware. And that we see the world as if from the perspective of the body. But that the awareness with which we experience the body and the world is not located in the body or the world, but the body and the world is located in awareness. Then the question of awareness being aware of itself is, is just obvious. It is obviously awareness's primary experience to be aware of the experience of being aware. So we really have to, if there is a lingering belief, it is either body that is aware, then that belief will make it impossible to understand that awareness is aware of itself in the absence of objects. We have to realize first that it, that it is now awareness that is aware of experience. It is not the body that is aware of experience. The body is experienced. It doesn't do the experiencing. It's such a tussle between the... It's, it, it's so counterintuitive to it, it, so it, many it, years of training, you it, know. It's, it, it, it's a tussle, but, but just, just... I mean, this is only a, a, um, an image, but, but it, it's, it's an image that shows how persuasive the waking state point of view is. Imagine that you um, fall asleep in garrison. So Mark falls asleep in garrison. But he dreams he is John on the streets of New York. Now, when John looks at the streets of New York, he sees whatever is in front of his eyes. When he closes his eyes, the streets of New York vanish. So he quite reasonably assumes that the consciousness with which he is experiencing the streets of New York lives just behind his eyes. But what is John's consciousness? Where does it really reside? In Mark's mind, in bed in garrison. But the, the, the illusion from John's illusory point of view, that, that the belief that the knowing with which I know my experience lives inside my eyes or inside my head, it is so strong. And his entire experience of the streets of New York seems to confirm his belief that the knowing with which he knows his experience lives inside the body. Why couldn't exactly the same thing be true of the waking state? Because if we explore our experience, everything suggests that it is. Because our experience is not that consciousness is in the body. The body is a series of perceptions and sensations that appear in consciousness. It, it's, it's a real confrontation. This, this is the, the root of the, of the issue. The belief and the feeling that consciousness lives in and shares the limits of the body. It's absolutely the crux of the matter. If this knot is untangled, all the other knots uh, get untangled very easily. So this is the